Happy New Year! We're tipping off 2020 by helping you with 2K20. We have expert tips, winning tips, and everything you need to know about play calling. Plus, of course, your top plays. Happy New Year! We hope 2020 is treating you well so far, and here we go. We have another special episode of 2K TV for you. Absolutely, and whether you've been playing the game since last September or you just jumped into NBA 2K20 over the holidays, we have all the tips in this episode to improve your stick skills. In fact, we've talked to some of the best 2K developers and they're dropping knowledge for you. Let's get started with the basics from gameplay director Mike Wang. And then you're going to hear from the president of Sim Nation himself, the Czar, with all your play calling tips. Check it out. Right now, we have gameplay director Mike Wang in the house for the first 2K20 expert tips. Hey, Mike, welcome. Thanks so much for having me here. Yes, Mike. Now, what can we share with the fans today? Yeah, well, the first thing to mention is probably that if you play 2K for a while, the major controls are all the same, so you'll feel right at home with 2K20. Um, but dribbling has changed a little bit, so this year you do everything with each flick of the stick. So if you tap up on the right stick, for example, this year, instead of getting a whole slew of moves, you get um, just a simple crossover, a single between the legs, and this changes based on the player. In terms of shooting, I know a lot of people were talking about different shot meter options and whatnot. I know this is something that you really like in the game this year. What kind of uh, examples of shot meters can you share with the fans? So you can have it by the hands, which is the, the default meter, and you can have different green light animations, okay? I love so that. when you hit a, a perfect shot, basically, uh, you can either have this little water effect, which is the splash, you can have a paint splat effect, or you can have a little quick flash, which is actually my favorite, it's nice and subtle. And then if you actually like the shot meter by your feet, a lot of people like this from NBA 2K17. Mm -hmm. It's very similar, it just fills left to right. And same three options, you can have a, the splash or the splat and the flash. Or my personal favorite, you can turn the shot meter off. And if you do that, you actually get a boost if you have perfect timing. You think a lot of players that are used to 2K are gonna opt in for turning the shot meter off to get that boost? I think so. I think especially the, the, the pro gamers and the real competitive players. And one thing to keep in mind though is when you turn the shot meter off, that you get a boost when you get perfect timing, but you also get a kind of a bigger hit if you have bad timing. You're gonna see a lot of misses if you're a little early or late with that shot meter off. I love that. Ooh, all green. What about some of the new dribbling systems? You mentioned having dual stick dribbling. Yeah. Uh, what tips can you give to some newcomers to 2K as well as some of the hardcore players? Yeah, well, I think what we wanted to do with the dribbling system this year is make it so that anybody could pick up the sticks and be successful early on. You can kind of get by with just the left stick. You can get simple like stops and snatch backs by just throwing the stick. But yeah, once you get kind of used to the way your player moves and you know there's 27 different dribble styles, you're gonna want to try to start to move more of your moves to the right sticks. That's where all the kind of the flashier ball handling moves are. If you want to do the twin legs move, it's that kind of down left angle. If you want to do it behind the back, it's straight down. And um, these are all kind of like you just chain them together by flicking the stick left and right and up and down. So let's say there's a new player or someone that wants to get better. How do they do that? Well, the first thing we always recommend is to jump into 2KU. Everything you want to know about the game is in there. So if you go into 2KU, and the first thing you'll see is the training game, and you can go in there, and then you'll see just tutorials on everything you want to do. There'll be a little overlay telling you what the move is and how to do it, and it'll walk you right through everything. So that's a great way to learn the basics of the game. I was on Twitter, and I saw your picture popping up so much during the 2K20 Community Day. How do you guys look at community feedback? Community feedback for us is priceless, and so um, we listen to everything that they say, and we try to make the game that, that they're going to love. What's happening, family? It's your man, Nazar, the AI architect for NBA 2K20, here to introduce you to the play system for NBA 2K. It's been a minute, and I'm excited to be back, so let's get started. Now, if you're new to the series and not yet a veteran play caller, and you want to know what your AI teammates are doing out there, be sure to peruse through the coach settings. I highly recommend you turn on offensive play vision to all plays and make sure play vision display is on light. This will enable you to see and anticipate what your AI teammates are doing on the floor and make you a much more effective offensive player in 2K20. 
When your team has the ball on offense, tap the plays bumper to bring up the play action menu, and then press pass to run a quick isolation for the ball handle. This will give you seven seconds of bliss for isolation spacing. This year, that spacing is dynamic. So when you move your player around the floor, your teammates will continue to create space for the duration of the isolation. The next option is the floppy. This play action button allows you to run a quick floppy action from any location on the floor. Tap the plays bumper and then press the shoot button and the AI will auto select the player to run a quick floppy action on command. It's real nice. Next up is the motion play action button. Now you no longer have to wait on the AI to kick off a freelance action. Tap the plays bumper and press the lob button to kick off a motion action. The action you get depends both on the freelance and on the players you have on the floor. This next play action button is one of my favorites. Tap the plays bumper and bring up the play action menu, then hit the same bumper again. Pass icons will appear over the heads of players to your left and right. You can then pass to either player. The player who made the pass will then screen away for a quick scoring opportunity. As we all know, you can't properly run an offense without running the pick and roll. To run the pick and roll or fade, hold the play calling bumper, and the AI will auto select the player to come and set a ball screen for you. If you want the screener to fade instead of roll, tap the icon pass bumper while still holding the other bumper. And finally, a more advanced option is to have the ball screen set by a specific player. To do this, tap the play calling bumper and then tap the icon pass bumper. Then hold the icon of the player you want to come set the screen. There you have it, 2K Nation. It's been my plum please and pleasure to make this introduction to the basics of play calling in NBA 2K20. Until next time, it's your man, Dazar, the resident president, reminding you to get buckets. And I'm out. I'm exhausted. Hi, exhausted. I'm the 2K MC, and I can go for days. Winter Madness is over, and while you take a look at this weekend's 2K Compete events, we're finding our five Winter Madness MVP. Check back next week to see who wins and to see who hit legend over the madness. Right now, Just Dawn has dropped into swags. Check out the latest gear and get ready, because we're bouncing in top plays with your best trampoline basketball. Oh! You know, I love giving them a hard time about their lack of passing. And I don't get it because I feel like it's natural. You get the ball and you want to be the star. Well, that's not being a team player, but if you want to learn how to be a team player, this next segment is for you. Here's gameplay director Mike Wang with some expert tips on passing. Listen up. Hey guys, I'm Mike Wang, here with expert tips. And today I have a crash course for you in passing for NBA 2K20. We have three different pass buttons for normal passes, bounce passes to spin the ball into the post, or lob passes to arc the ball over defenders. You can double tap the bounce pass button to add some flashiness, or double tap lob pass for an alley-oop. By holding the pass buttons, we can do more advanced actions with our AI teammates. Hold the pass button for a skip pass, which passes the ball to a teammate further away than a simple pass. Hold pass after the receiver catches the ball to keep control of the passer. Use the sticks to make a cut to complete the give and go. You can even finish with an oop if you press the shoot button. Hold bounce pass for a teammate to run towards the ball for a handoff. A great move for a safe inbound in my team's triple threat. You can change this option in controller settings to full receiver control to move your teammate wherever you want as you hold the bounce pass button. Finally, hold lob pass to have your teammate cut to the hoop. This is useful on the break to have a three-point shooter cut to the basket instead of flaring out to the arc. Icon passing is the preferred method of passing for NBA 2K pros. Tap the icon pass bumper and notice the icons above your teammates' heads. Press the button and make the pass. Nice and simple. 
If you press the plays bumper while the icons are up, you'll pass to the teammate closest to the basket. Perfect for passing bigs with the break starter badge for easy buckets. And she drops in the layup. Also, you can flick the right stick, aka the pro stick, in any direction while holding the icon pass bumper to pass in that direction. This also has a flashy pass variant in controller settings. You can change the behavior of icon passing from default to full receiver control. Bring the icons up and then hold the icon above your teammate. Now you can move them with the left stick to get open for the pass. Or you can choose pass type control. When the icons are above your teammates, double tap their button for a bounce pass or hold their button for a lob pass. We have so many different ways for you to move the ball on the court in NBA 2K20. And if you're not sure which pass type works in which situation, hit up 2KU and check the tips section for a general idea of when to make what pass. So hit up Scrimmage in 2KU, work on your passing skills, and I'll see you next time for more expert tips. Well, 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 it's your man Bizarre, the AI architect back in the building. Today we're gonna take you a step further into something a little more advanced, custom playlists that can be available on the play action button. Let's say you're watching your favorite YouTuber and they recommend a few plays in your favorite team's playbook. Instead of searching through a sea of plays and actions, you can easily make a playlist that includes your favorite plays. First, go to the Offensive Settings Pause menu and go down to Play Selection. You can replace as many or as few plays as you like. For this example, let's replace the first three play actions with our three favorite plays from any one team's playbook. First, select the play action you want to replace and press the Pass button. That will bring up all the plays and actions in the team's playbook. Now, move down to the play that you want to select and press the Pass button again to select that play. At this point, you can assign the play to a player or make another selection. Next, scroll down to the next play you want to replace and press the Pass button again. Select the play and again press the Pass button to select. Repeat the process again for each play you want to replace. Now that we have added all the plays we want, scroll back to the top of the playlist and begin the process of assigning each play to a player currently in the game. To assign a play to a player, scroll to the play you want to assign and then press the Lob Pass button. Then select the player you want to assign that play to and press the Pass button. This will select the player and send you back to the playlist to select the next play. Scroll down to the next play you want to assign and press that lob button again. Now select the same or different player to assign that play to and continue like this until you have assigned all your new plays. When complete, you can scroll through your plays and see who they are assigned to. If you're pleased with your selections, press the bounce pass button to exit out of the menu. You are now ready to use your custom playlist in game. Now once you're back in the game on offense, hit that plays bumper, and now you have one button access to three or more favorite plays. It's real noise. <laughs> Until next time, it's your man Dazar helping you get bu 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 buckets in a map. You know, this couldn't be a tip special without gameplay producer Scott O'Gallagher. And over the last couple of weeks, he's been giving you insight on improving your game on the court and on the stick. That's right, and he's back this week with another Winning Tips segment. Take it away. Welcome back. Again, if you have not seen the first two parts of Winning Tips, I highly encourage you to go check them out right now. It's time to hit the neighborhood. Keep in mind that there's a lot of sharks out there and I'm here to help you navigate those waters. So whether you're in the playground, the rec, or the pro-am, one of the biggest ways that you can help your team is by being a great screen setter. So there's two different ways that we can be effective as a screener. One, we can screen on the basketball, or two, we can screen away from the basketball. It's always great to keep the help side defense occupied. When you keep them occupied on the weak side, you can disrupt their rotations. Now when you set a good screen, when do I slip? Well, there's two different ways that we can approach this. One, when we're on ball, we want to know what kind of pick and roll coverage is our defender playing. 
If he jumps out to guard the ball handler, we can immediately slip. If we're off the basketball, we're setting a screen. If my man switches, that's my immediate cue to go slip right to the basket. The two most important things when you're setting a screen is one, you gotta sprint to the screen. When you sprint to a screen, you make it much more difficult for the hedge man to get in position. And two, when you set the screen, you gotta make sure that you're there early and you're set. Just remember that the ball has energy. We wanna move the ball up the court and look for easy transition opportunities before we get into our half court offense. It doesn't matter which perimeter position that we play, the ball moves faster than you dribbling it. So if you have somebody up the wing to throw the ball, early the ball up. If I'm a big and I just rebounded the ball, I need to find one of my guards to outlet the ball to. We wanna look for early baskets in transition. It doesn't matter if we're five on five or three on three, whether you're guarding the basketball or you're guarding off ball, all of you guys on the team defensively are on a string together. We gotta to remember to contain the basketball and help the helper. All right, so let's look back to the celebrity game. And here we see Chris displaying the one act that we don't like here at 2K TV, and that's my man didn't score. Here's a wide open drive down the lane. He's supposed to set up and fill. He does not, because he's hugging up on his man, because he doesn't care as long as his man didn't score. You got to experience that a little bit in the showcase. I wasn't the one that got 45 points dropped on my head by Bear to Beast. That's not a winning attitude, Chris. One facet of the game that is overlooked but is so important, whether we're on the digital hardwood or the real hardwood, is communication. Don't up, communication up. is important, but at the end of the day, you gotta have one voice. You don't want five or three different guys yelling in a headset, communing different things. One guy take ownership and direct the rest of the troops. And if that's you, you know the terminology. You've been watching Winning Tips. Not only do you know where you need to be, you know where your teammates need to be. When you look at all great defenses, the one thing that they do is communicate. Talk to your teammates. Help him out. I got help. Be vocal, make multiple defensive efforts. And I guarantee you those wins are gonna go up immediately. All right, you've watched all three segments of Winning Tips and I promise you that you are better basketball players. So I encourage you to take these tips, apply them to the real hardwood, apply them to the digital hardwood, and I guarantee that those W's are gonna go up immediately. Because that's what we do here at Winning Tips. We improve your game. Until next time, winners win, and I'm out. This is the 2KMC, here to bless you with your first top plays of 2020. And this week, they're all on trampolines. Whoa! Yeah! Showing some love to the cages, baby! Whoa! <laughs> Kicking it off with T-Butter 415. Going coast to coast and soaring on two defenders for the two-hand flush. Don't jump, young blood, or you'll end up like both the defenders featured in this clip. Now we've got J. Russ, double two, four, double one, four, eight, seven. You can't stop me. Getting up to swap the shot and catching a body on the other end. Hitting them with the between the legs reverse. Now let's get some big top challenge action with Drippy 2K. Snatching the green shot and going the other way to jump over everybody. These mascots can't hang with the big heads. Seriously, did you see him fall back to the earth? <laughs> Last up is Yukel and the squad. Tossing not one, not even two, definitely not three, but seven straight lobs for the game-winning slam. Never seen that before, but give the defense some credit. You have to be pretty awful to allow seven straight lob passes. Like, exceptionally so. Like, they are the Michael Jordan of awful defense. Every single one of them. Ugh. Now vote for your favorite play. And make sure to submit all your highlights to social media using the hashtag 2KTVWOW. I'll be back next week with more of your best. This is the 2KMC, and I'm out. Peace. You know what some of these tips could help with? 
competition. And we'll have a lot of that coming up in the new year. We have the NBA 2K League Season 3, the Global Championships, and of course, the My Team Unlimited Tournament. And you still have time to qualify for that My Team Unlimited Tournament, and we'll have more on that next week when we break down the qualifiers so far and get you ready for that January 25th Tournament Day. So until then, we'll see you next time.